What's good, Super Nation? So today we have the PlayStation 5 Pro reveal. I know I'm late. I'm sorry, but I'm here. I got the got notifications late. Woke up, saw the notifications. I was like, yo, I have to do this. I want to see what the whole fuss is about with the PlayStation 5 Pro. So with that being said, guys, let us get into this reaction, shall we? Let us see the power of PlayStation 5 Pro. Hi. I'm Mark Cerny. I'm excited to be here to talk about the newest addition to our console lineup, PlayStation okay. 5 Pro, and how it advances gaming technology. But first, I want to take just a minute to look at what we put in the original PlayStation 5 and how it delivers an exceptional gaming experience. I still prefer the PlayStation 4 design. I know this design is, you know, it looks futuristic and everything, but I still prefer the PlayStation 4 design. I'm not saying this design is bad, I'm just I, just, I just prefer the PlayStation 4 design more, you know? But anyway, that's my preference. When PS5 debuted in 2020, it brought a lot to the table. Eight Zen 2 CPU cores form the brains of PlayStation 5 and enable high-speed complex gameplay with character counts reaching into the hundreds and frame rates that can be as high as 120 frames a second. PS5 has a powerful RDNA 2 GPU, which can render anything from intricate details to fantastic worlds with vast panoramas to explore. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual improvements, including reflections off of water or glass, and the realism that comes from real-time global illumination. A custom SSD can load data at breathtaking speed, resulting in ultra-fast transitions between game worlds and data streaming rates so high that traversal speeds are essentially unlimited. Tempest 3D Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound of the games. With audio so real, you may not even need to see the enemies to know exactly where they are. Finally, the DualSense controller has haptics that let you feel through your hands what your character is experiencing inside of the game. It's wonderful to see such variety and richness of game experiences. Creators have made amazing use of the hardware capabilities, but when I talk to them, I do hear about their desire for more graphics performance. The dreams of the developers are bigger than can be supported at 60 frames per second, and that yeah. leads to an aspect of modern gaming that we're all familiar with graphics modes. It can be a difficult choice for players. Fidelity modes emphasize the visuals, typically through higher resolution rendering. Yep. These modes might also have enhanced Gotta detail both, or man, use more ray tracing. And visuals. But the yeah. games only run at 30 frames per second. The visuals can really? be choppier and the controls less responsive. Performance modes emphasize frame rate and interactivity, typically choosing to run at 60 frames per second. mainly by reducing the graphical detail until those frame rates can be achieved. Wow. When asked to decide on the mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. Removing that decision, or at least narrowing that divide, is one of the key targets for PlayStation 5 Pro. We want to give players the graphics yeah, that the game creators 60. aspire to at the high frame rates the players typically prefer. To do that, PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the big three. First, we made the GPU much larger and increased the speed of the memory it uses. The result is rendering that's up to 45% faster. Second, we made major upgrades to the ray tracing, taking a streamlined and accelerated approach that allows calculation of the rays at double or even triple the speeds of PlayStation 5. Damn. And finally, we added custom hardware for machine learning and an AI library called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR for short. PSSR analyzes the game images pixel by pixel and can add an extraordinary amount of detail, which boosts the effective resolution of the game. Yo, AI is taking game over. creators are adding PS5 Pro support to new and existing titles. And with the big three involved, the results can be pretty amazing. 
with graphics showing something like fidelity levels of detail, but it doubled the frame rate. Here's The Last of Us Part Two running on PS5 Pro. It has huge amounts of detail and targets a super smooth 60 frames per second. Let's compare this to the fidelity mode on PS5, which is only running at 30 frames per second yeah, and is therefore this. much choppier. This goal of delivering almost fidelity-like graphics at performance frame rates has been achieved for a broad set of titles, including Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. We can see that PS5 Pro is close to doubling the power of PlayStation 5. Another way to compare the two consoles is to look at PS5 Pro versus performance mode on PS5, both of which target 60 frames per second. What we see here is a difference in detail. PS5 Pro is much sharper and crisper than PS5. For this, my favorite is the parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. And here we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene, including the trees and procedural cars. So overall, some remarkable improvement to the games. On PS5 Pro, we can see increased sharpness to the graphics or smoother and more responsive gameplay. This is the big three showing their value. As you've been seeing, machine learning via the PSSR library is being used quite broadly to add pixel detail and boost frame rate. But there are as many approaches as there are game engines. The increase in raw GPU power is being especially effective for Horizon Forbidden West. Apart from the oh, detail yeah, that boost, that extra graphics power is allowing for improvements to lighting and visual effects. Ooh. Damn! As well as to the hair and the skin in cinematics. Open up, guys. Door of orders. Good enough for me. That's crazy. Ray tracing is finding broad usage as well, particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates. The faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real difference allowing Gran Turismo 7 to add ray-traced reflections between the cars in gameplay while continuing to support their targeted 60 frames per second. That boost in ray tracing is also delivering big wins for Hogwarts Legacy, allowing not only for better reflections and a greater variety of reflective Jesus. surfaces, but also for further realism in the casting of shadows. I hope you've enjoyed this run-through of the technology behind PlayStation 5 Pro. Simply put, it's the most powerful console we've ever built, and a worthy addition to the PS5 family. Let me wrap this up by giving you a quick look at a number of games running on the new console. Okay. You'll never win! Well, well, if you have deep pockets, you can get yourself a PlayStation 5 Pro for $700. Or you can go the cheaper route and get a PlayStation 5 
and then install two terabytes in that bitch, like what I'm going to be doing when I get my PlayStation 5. <laughs> That's just me. That's just the majority of players. Like, they don't have the money to afford the PlayStation 5 Pro. We're going to go with the cheaper route. Get the console and then put it at um, two or three or even four terabyte SSD inside of it. That's just us. But I but but also I see the benefits of having the PlayStation Five Pro. Let me just call it Pro because I'm getting tongue tied. Pro. I see the benefits of having the Pro. I mean, you have the power of the performance and the power of the graphics together. So you can basically play a game at ultra settings and have ray tracing crank the hell up. To maximum and get a solid 60 FPS that's crazy and if you don't have ray tracing on so that means that you'll be going all the way up to about a hundred hundred plus FPS just like the PlayStation 5 but even more maybe a hundred maybe 150 depending on how you set the settings well, that's crazy so even though the PlayStation 5 is still powerful, even though the Pro is, of course, obviously more powerful. I mean, the presentation was good. We get to see why the price tag is so high. You get to understand why. I mean, at first I was like, excuse me? But then you think about it, you're like, okay, I, I get it. With all that presentation that they show us, obviously, why it's $700, obviously. But for me, I'm gonna go with the PlayStation 5 normal with a two or three terabyte stick inside of it, and then, yeah, game on. That's just me. And plus, the, the remaining money, I can get two or three games plus a PlayStation Plus. Maybe one or two months. So, yeah, that same, leading up to the same $700. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, with that being said, guys, that was my reaction to the PlayStation 5 presentation. Tell me your thoughts. What do you guys think about the whole price the whole um, hardware and everything, post in the comment section. Do you agree with me? Post in the comment section. Okay, so yeah. So you guys enjoyed this reaction, drop a like, post your comments down below, share this video with your friends, and also hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, I'm out.